Germanium, is it right for you? My goal with that opening number there was simply to use a whole bunch of germanium pedals in as many different ways as possible. It was one of those figuring it out as it came together type of jams. But really, what is germanium and why do I care if it's in a pedal? What does it replace? What replaced it? Does it sound any different? Does it sound any better? Is it worth $500? Let's start with this. Germanium is an element. You probably already knew that, and it was widely used in electronics before we switched over to silicon. It was only discovered in the very late 1800s when a piece of ore was found in Germany eh, that looked a little bit different. So they passed it off to the nearby mining academy, like you do, and they said, yeah, this is actually an all-new mineral. We've never seen anything like this before. And they found that it was made up of 75% silver, 18% sulfur, and 7% something else. That something else turned out to be an all-new metal element, a missing element, right below silicon. That's our germanium. Fast forward to a time and place we've referenced many times on this channel, 1940s, Bell Labs, New Jersey. They were hard at work building technology. Mostly for war stuff, but some of that stuff turned out to be pretty good for music too, like the vocoder. But also the first transistor, a solid state electronic switch of sorts using germanium as its primary element. And it is impossible for me to overstate what a big deal this is. It is a 2001 A Space Odyssey monolith worthy advancement, if you ask me. And if you ever find yourself down in Homedale, New Jersey, swing by the site and you'll see this unusual looking water tower out front built in 1961 in the style of a transistor to commemorate the event. It's also where they filmed a lot of the Apple TV show Severance, if this looks familiar. In the opening jam for this video, you heard me getting really nasty with my baritone Telecaster and this Electroharmonics Germanium 4 Big Muff. <laughs> Now, as far as Big Muffs go, it's more of its own thing, but just to loop things back around, in 1969, some of the first Big Muffs did indeed use germanium transistors. That Muff circuit, designed by Bob Meyer of Bell Labs. Again, this is not one of those early ones, but rather a germanium overdrive distortion pedal that you can get today for under $100. And we can look inside and see it's germanium transistors sitting right there and right there, being all germanium and stuff. Let's see what kind of trouble we can get into with this and that pink parts caster.
This is probably my favorite pedal of the bunch. You've got two independent sides with lots of controls. And if you want to experiment, this is the one to get. It's a serious sleeper of a pedal. But maybe we're skipping ahead too far ahead. How about what does a transistor do? Think of a transistor as a way of regulating the flow of electrical current, or think of it as a gate. In fact, the three main components of a transistor are a source, a sink, and a gate. Of course, terminology varies, but we're keeping it kind of surface level. So if you know, you know. Now, these little gates can be used to create amplification, which is why the Jackson Audio Twin 12 pedal says that it's the same circuit as the Silvertone 1484, even though this swaps out tubes for transistors. That tube to transistor shift was like a shrink ray for things like televisions, radios, and computers. And in addition to amplifying things, those little gates can be built up and used to implement logic, including AND, OR, and the all-important NAND gate. That's how we get memory, processing, I.O., cryptography, everything to do with modern day electronics. Your phone has billions, billions with a B, transistors in it. The ENIAC supercomputer had 18,000 vacuum tubes and took up nearly 2,000 square feet. By comparison, a vacuum tube iPhone would pretty much need to be its own planet powered by its own sun. So the transistor ushers in a whole new era of everything, but we're still not done yet because germanium transistors have a few drawbacks. Most notably, germanium is difficult to mine and therefore kind of expensive to get. Plus it's got a few operating quirks, like the fact that it's very sensitive to temperature variations. Years ago, I had a crazy old fuzz pedal that I got from a church yard sale of all places, and it sounded great at all of our practices down in the basement, and then I had it outside for an end of summer pool party kind of thing, and it literally sounded like the fart pedal. And this thread on the gear page is a really fun read. I didn't realize how temperature sensitive germanium fuzzes were. Lots of similar stories and tech tidbits and some discussion at the end here about using a thermoelectric cooling module to pull heat away from the transistors. That's one approach. What Benson did with their germanium fuzz here is put a pair of resistors over the top of the transistors specifically to generate heat. And they're normally under this cute little foam blanket right here because when this pedal is powered on and this LED is red, it's literally warming up. So you wait a few minutes and eventually this light turns green, there it goes, and then using this highly unscientific infrared thermometer, we can tell it's getting up pretty close to 100 degrees. And while we play through it, it's gonna be constantly adjusting the temperature and the bias point to give us a consistent sound. I'm gonna play an isolated clip from the opening jam, but this time, pay attention to the LED on this pedal. <laughs> There's also a really good reason this pedal is available in two colors, studio black and solar white. Benson found a 20 degree Fahrenheit difference between the two when left out in the sun. Science rules. Now, just seven years after the birth of the germanium transistor, its successor, the silicon transistor was born also at Bell Labs. And at least from an industrial standpoint, it was better in almost every regard. Cheaper, more stable, more durable, uh, lower reverse current leakage, a larger forward current. So today, germanium is a lot like the vacuum tubes that it replaced. You can still get them, but supplies are limited. And when it comes to gear, germanium isn't limited to just transistors either. There's lots of op-amp and MOSFET-based dirt boxes with germanium diodes. 
a diode being an electrical component which allows current to flow in one direction once it reaches a certain threshold. It's how clipping happens in a lot of pedals, like these full-tone OCDs. I've got a regular one and a custom shop germanium one. Let's go back to back. These are both OCD version 2 pedals, although they have a few minor variations between them that I can see, not counting the germanium diodes and what looks like some capacitors hooked up on the other side of the board, gooped up in glue here. So it may not be a true apples to apples comparison, but you get the idea. And if you're curious about the two different settings of the volume knobs here, these have two different output levels. This one's quite a bit hotter and I wanted to keep things marginally even so we can focus on the tonal characteristics. Also, interesting side note, some of the way earlier OCD pedals, like the version 1.4s, actually used a single germanium diode in the clipping section, but he stopped doing that as they got harder and more expensive to source. Now, as I was putting together some clips for this video, I just put some YouTube on the TV to have something on in the background, and I was watching one of my favorite episodes of the Secret Life of Machines. It was the one about radio. So here's Rex tuning in a radio signal using a lump of crystal and a cat's whisker. That's an extremely thin piece of wire. And here's Tim with, in his own words, the modern equivalent of the cat's whisker, the germanium diode. And I saw that and I just thought it was such a wonderful sign that I'm kind of doing the right thing with this video because I've always kind of seen this channel as being like, the Secret Life of Pedals. I put a link to Tim's YouTube channel down in the video description. He's still doing it. Same sense of humor, same sense of wonder, so go check him out. If you like nerdy stuff like this with demonstrations, this is all very much inspired by The Secret Life of Machines. But back to germanium. I think the concept of using germanium is pretty cool because it gives us a bit of a peek into the early heydays of distortion as an effect. And there's definitely something to be said for that. But at the end of the day, it's just another variation. Bridge pickup, neck pickup, middle pickup, EL84, 6V6, poly, nitro, strat, tele, it's whatever serves the sound and the song and the player best. Germanium transistors are more expensive. They're harder to find. They're more finicky to implement. And that often leads to a higher price tag. But a pedal costing more, even if it's justified by the rare parts, doesn't automatically make it better all the time. My buddy Jeff Berner is a producer, engineer, mixer, multi-instrumentalist, college professor, and just all-around hilarious dude who works at Studio G in Brooklyn. Worked on a whole bunch of albums, recently wrapped up something with the band Glimmer. He's got access to all the modern and all the vintage stuff, and he uses all of it. But sometimes it's just about finding the right gear for the project that you're working on. Thanks, Jeff. You're one of the good ones. And also an extra special thanks to user Erlandurantum6972, who says, I'd love a video about the germanium muff. I hope you like this one. I kind of took that idea and expanded it a little bit more, but I love doing these longer form conceptual videos. And I'll get back to a single specific pedal video for next time. I'll also make my usual plea that I do at the end here. Please, 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 please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. A growing channel is one that gets more attention, and I've got goals. I'll catch you on the next one.